Ron, with a background in construction, noticed numerous features which he was able to recognize, such as pilasters and a flying buttress. It's difficult for some people to visualize what a walled city looks like. There just aren't many examples around today. This photograph of Jerusalem back in the 1800s will at least give you an idea of how these looked. There is a distinct beginning to these cities, which is the wall around them. One of the first things people notice when we visit this site is that there is a distinct beginning. You drive along and see barren plain, then suddenly there it is. It looks like a wall with inside structures extending above the wall in a few places. The first really exciting discovery Ron made was the sphinx shape just outside the beginning of this wall on the north side. And this is entirely consistent with the early Mesopotamian practice of having deities protect the entrance into the cities at the city gates. Uh, one of the things that becomes apparent when one looks at this, say for example, uh, from the top of Masada is the wall system. Uh, what we are looking at here is the typical citadel city. This is where the original city was smaller than the present or the city that was destroyed and the pressure of the increasing population caused them to enlarge the cities and extend the walls or build new walls uh, radiating out from this central or citadel city. Also, we see in these walls uh, pilasters. Now this is a thickening of the wall to give it uh, strength. Uh, one of the defensive mechanisms uh, of a wall was to make it resistant to battering rams or uh, attempts to break through these walls from the outside. Uh, other features that we see are, for example, uh, flying buttresses. These were usually associated with uh, inside structures or on the inside of the external wall to act as a support. Uh, it would not be a good idea to put these on the outside of the wall because they would be easily knocked down. Uh, or they would serve as a refuge for people that were attempting to break through the wall. They could simply get under these pilot, uh, flying buttresses and uh, shield themselves from overhead attack. Another feature that we see in these burned out cities is that typical of ancient cities, they are built uh, astride a mountain stream that would uh, provide the population with all the water they needed for themselves and for whatever other purposes uh, they might have, for example, taking care of their animals. And this is true of all of these five locations. Now the streams uh, at the present time have dried up and are only uh, filled uh, a couple of times a year during the rainy season in the winter. But back during this time, we're told that this uh, entire valley here was uh, like the Garden of the Lord, or like the Garden of Eden. So it was obviously very well watered and uh, very fertile before it was destroyed by this uh, fire and brimstone.
Now, uh, what we will show you here in uh, fairly rapid succession are a series of restorations of sections and features of these cities that uh, from research and from the remains that we see here uh, will give you an idea of what these looked like before they were destroyed by fire. Now, uh, the one thing that I would like to specifically draw your attention to, those of you that are familiar with construction techniques in ancient times, you will notice that this uh, temple that is built in the general shape of a zagarot or pyramid uh, displays the ends of wooden beams uh, at the different floor levels uh, as it uh, goes from bottom to top. Now this is typical of ancient strong, uh, stone uh, construction. Uh, these were to provide ceilings for lower rooms in the structure and floors for higher rooms in the structure. And these are very visible. And these things do not occur in nature. You might find an isolated hole in an area. This is not unusual, but to find them on an exact level at exact intervals this uh, definitely tells us that these are man-made structures. So anyway, uh, we believe after uh, considerable research, chemical analysis, uh, that these are the remains of the cities of the plains. They have all of the structures associated with ancient cities. They have the ramparts above the cities, the jagged uh, uh, tooth defect uh, providing a place for people to hide behind the uh, top of the wall and yet be able to fire arrows down at the enemy and uh, anyway we see most all of the recognizable features of ancient cities we also so see windows uh, we also see uh, rooms that have been preserved in the ash uh, it's dangerous to go into these and examine them very carefully, uh, but these are all indications of a city that was burned by fire exactly as was described uh, in the book of Genesis. Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities of the plains, enjoyed a beautiful and very prosperous existence 
the place where Lot chose rather than the mountains to feed his flocks and herds and raise his family. And you'll notice here that we have several feet of nothing but white powdery ash. Ash that's only produced when material is burned at degree of temperatures exceeding 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. This stuff crumbles to powder in your hands, sticks to your clothes, it's just pure ash. In Jude we're told that they're an example of what will happen to the wicked, even the angels. And of course in Ezekiel 28 God tells Satan that he will be reduced to ashes upon the earth. And Malachi 4 tells us that the righteous shall tread upon the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of their feet. All that is left of the stones, the wood, the people, the animals, everything that was in Sodom and Gomorrah. You recall that when the fire of God burned the offering on Mount Carmel, when Elijah called the priests of Baal to account, it says that it burned the offering, the stones, and licked up the water out of the trough. So no one will ever find any archaeological remains of the cities of the plain other than these ashes. And friends, if we defy God's kind and merciful entreaty to come to Him and be saved and be renewed and forgiven, we will end up in exactly this condition because the Word of God tells us so, and God says that He is the Lord. He changes not, neither does He alter the thing that has gone out of His lips.